All right, here's a headline from The Daily Wire. Gay couple allegedly pimped out and made child porn with adopted children. This is a very difficult story to read. It's one of the most horrifying news stories I've ever seen. But here is the, uh, the story anyway. A shocking investigation has reportedly uncovered disturbing new details about a gay activist couple in Georgia who are charged with raping their adopted sons and pimping them out to a local LGBTQ pedophile ring. A months-long town hall, town hall investigation published Tuesday viewed uh, recorded jailhouse calls and new court documents and spoke exclusively to a family member revealing that the alleged sexual abuse went much deeper than previously reported. The investigation will have three more installments according to the town hall. The married couple, William Dale Zulak Jr., 33, is a government worker. His husband, Zachary Jacoby Zulak, 35, a banker, were arrested last summer on charges of sodomizing their two elementary age sons and prostituting the children. They were indicted by a grand jury on charges of incest, aggravated sodomy, aggravated child molestation, felony sexual exploitation of children, and felony prostitution of a minor. If convicted, they face more than nine life sentences each. Both men have pleaded not guilty. Um, Then we get into some of the details. The Zulocks adopted the brothers, now 9 and 11, from a Christian special needs adoption agency. Before their arrest, the couple lived in affluent life in Oxford, Georgia, an Atlanta suburb. The children were enrolled in third and fourth grade when their um, adoptive fathers were arrested. According to a 17-count indictment, the two men allegedly performed oral sex on both their adoptive sons, forced the boys to perform oral sex on them. Uh, They raped their sons anally. At least once, the older boy was allegedly injured from the rape. The sexual abuse allegedly began in late 2019 and became worse in 2021. Williams has since admitted to forcing his 11-year-old son to perform oral copulation on him. Um, in a sworn affidavit, he admitted this. I can't even keep reading this. Uh, it's an important report from Town Hall, and you can go, and you can, and, and, and this is, as I said, there are multiple installments of it. Uh, and and it, it's, it's good that Town Hall is following this story. The Daily Wire is following it. Because we know that this is the kind of story that, uh, the corporate media is not interested in. Uh, they, uh, this is not something they want to talk about. Especially when you, I mean, it's it's bad enough for their narrative anyway uh, that the culprits here uh, are is a gay couple. But then also when you when you add in this LGBT pedophile ring, um, that just makes it all the more certain that the corporate media is not going to want to talk about this. What can we say about it? Well, to begin with, public ex- execution for both should, should be the, the penalty. Uh, I just think every time I read someone who does something horrific like this and then they get charged with multiple life sentences, every time I read that, it, it, it makes me furious. Not only because of what they've done, of course, but just the, the absurdity, this charade of giving multiple, what the hell, who can- multiple life sentences? As if that's supposed to, oh no, now we're really serious. Life in prison isn't enough. So we all acknowledge that life in prison isn't enough for these demons. And so we're not just going to give them life in prison. We're going to give them nine lives in prison. Well, if they were cats, then maybe that would mean something. But they're human beings. And so they only have one life to live. And you're not making the sentence any harsher by adding on life sentences. It's, It's totally symbolic. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a grotesque, just mockery of justice. Because what they should be doing, if you are admitting, if the justice system, the court system is admitting that a life sentence is not enough of a punishment, which it isn't, then there is only one other step up. And it's not to add on, well, if we'll give them nine, we'll give them 50 life sentences. That'll show them. No, if the one life sentence is not enough of a punishment, and we all seem to agree that it's not, then the next step is execution. Um and it should be done publicly, and it should be done pretty quickly. Charge them, you convict them, they're convicted. Uh, you you take them out, you take them out back. Shortly thereafter, you parade them out. You parade them out in front of a crowd. You want a crowd there because we want them to know that this final disgrace of them being killed. We want them to know that it's being seen. We want them to know that, and we want them to have that additional bit of suffering. 
We want all the we want all the suffering for them possible. We want to cause them immense suffering because that's justice. And we also want society to see that. We want society to see this is how we this is what we do with people who treat kids this way. Anyone else in the LGBT pedophile ring? When we find you, this is what we're going to do to you. So that's what it should be. First of all. And the second point is that this is not uh, surprising. This is horrifying. It's infuriating. It's evil. It's uh, nauseating. It's disgusting. It's a lot of things. Um, but it's not surprising. You're putting children into a disordered environment. And when you do that, you can't be surprised by the horrible things that follow. Look, children need a mom and a dad. That's what children need. They need a mom and a dad. Children, every child has a mom and a dad. Um, Every child biologically has a mother and father. Not every child has a mother and father who are willing to or able to care for them for whatever reason. And so does that mean that we say, well, uh, you know, your first, your, 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 your biological set of mother and father didn't work out. So we're just going to, so that whole arrangement, we don't, you don't need that. We're, we're going to do something else for you. You know, we'll give you two dads or two moms or one mom or whatever. You know, it's, it's fine. You'll, you'll settle, you'll settle for something else. Uh, that cannot be the solution. Now, yes, is it, if you, can mother, father couples, can they abuse their children? Does that happen? Of course it does. But you want to give kids the best chance possible. You want to put them in the, in the most ideal possible situation to, to start with. And horrific things will still happen even when you do that. We all know that. That's one of the, that's just, that's one of the terrible things about living in a fallen world. But you still want to give kids the best chance possible. Which means you give them a mother and a father. And by the way, you know, and I made this point on on Twitter and and, uh, there were people pretending as always to be offended by it. Um, and yet, as always, you know, I say this, and most other people, they listen, they, they, it's like they, they know that I'm right, even if they won't say it out loud. And um, the point is that I would not, I would, I would not hire a man to babysit my kids for two hours so that my wife and I can go out for dinner. I would never do that. Now, if there's a man who's a close family member, a close friend who I, who I know very well and trust, it's obviously different. But I would not hire, when it comes to like hiring a babysitter, someone you don't really know, and you're hiring someone, this is what they do for a job, and you're bringing them in to watch your kids, I wouldn't hire a man for that. And almost no parent would or ever has. So they could hear that and say, oh, that's, uh, I, I don't, well, no, almost no parent would. You know, you go on some babysitter service and, you, you know, you're looking for a, a nanny service or whatever it is, uh, and there's a lot of them out there. And you're looking for someone to care for your kids. Uh, if you see a, a man's profile come up, you're scrolling right past that one. Almost everyone does. Because again, it's about, it's about putting your kid in any situation, in the most ideal possible situation. You're playing the odds. You're looking at statistics. And so you know, almost no one would hire a male babysitter to babysit their kids. And yet we're, we're, we're giving male couples kids to adopt? Does that make sense? Like, would you have hired these two guys to come watch your kids for a night? If you were on, let's say you're on a, you know, baby nanny service or something, but someone's recommended to you maybe, said, oh, you need a babysitter. And you say, well, who you got? And then they name these two 30-year-old men. Would you, would you say, okay, I'll, yeah, I'll have them come babysit my kids for three hours? Almost nobody would whether they admit it out loud or not. And yet we're giving or adopting kids out to them. And that'll do it for this portion of the show as we move over to the members block. Hope to see you there. If not, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed.